Hello people, in today's video we're going to talk about Cube World and Valoran. So Cube World was an ambitious game designed by a husband and wife team, which surged to popularity back in 2013 when the game first released, that is in early access. And afterwards it just kind of got forgotten. So Cube World is a voxel based RPG that gives you the ability to pick from 4 classes to explore a massive world. You can tame pets, explore dungeons, fight monsters or simply glide around and enjoy the view. I know what you're thinking right now, that that all sounds really good, so why why is it not popular anymore? Well, it wasn't bad at first, but it kind of became bad when it released on Steam. So one of the things that destroyed Cubo, for me personally at least, was the region locking feature, which is advertised as their unique per land progression system, makes finding loot, solving quests and clearing dungeons rewarding and exciting over and over again. It basically meant that you unlock several benefits in a specific region by completing various tasks. However, once you go out of that region, you'll have to do it over and over and over and over again. So basically, every time you want to venture out of the region that you're currently in, you have to do the same thing over again to get the same benefits. It also meant that once you cleared one region, you kind of played the game, right? So now you have to do it all over again on the same character for no good reason really. The problem with Cube World is that it had a lot of potential but it never really seemed to fulfill that potential. One of the major problems with Cube World was the development team which was a two person team which meant that obviously development was going to go very 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 slow. Usually when you see games being developed in early access, if they ever get out of early access you kind of expect a popular game to start growing their company to hire more people to really realize the game that they're making but Cubeball chose not to do that they chose to follow the same formula that they had which meant that they could not possibly develop the game to, to an extent that people really wanted another problem is their communication there's just dead silence from their part last time the main developer tweeted was in 2019 when the game released on steam before that there was a hiatus for over a year where he didn't tweet while developing the game, so no one really knew that they were still developing it until it all of a sudden just released on Steam in 2019. So why am I talking about Cubeball? Well, because Cubeball heavily inspired a game called Valoran, a game I recently found, which is an open source game developed by the people in the community, people who play the game, and it is best of all free to play, obviously being open source. The project is community driven and it has very frequent updates. As far as I've seen, it's been weekly pretty much that there's been updates. This communication to the community has been weak. I think that it really has a place in the market that Cubo left. Kind of in, in the hole that Cubo left in all the players, I think Valoran can fit that hole. I think may maybe not now, but in the future, Valoran will be a stable voxel based. RPG. The game is beautiful to say the least. It has rainy forests, dark dungeons, vast deserted areas and incredible northern lights visible at night. It has a very beautiful environment, very beautiful design. It has a bunch of different crafting options which are needed because you'll have to do a lot of the crafting yourself. The game is very grindy and very reliant on crafting although bigger monsters drop rare items that you can use. So as far as I know you have all the recipes unlocked from the beginning which I think it's a bit of a shame because I love the idea of grinding for various recipes and unlocking them as you go because it not only gives you a sense of exploration and, and a sense of accomplishment, it also makes the game less overwhelming. The whole crafting process right now is a bit overwhelming because you just have everything available to you and you just have to read every single thing and see what it does. I would have loved a very simpler crafting process from the beginning and then you kind of get recipes as you go. But I think that's up to each person's interpretation of how a crafting process should be. In fact, I think a lot of the game is overwhelming because you're kind of just thrown into this world and give you full freedom. Which is up to the individual player if that is something they like or not. As a solo player, I found it very challenging to start the game because I just kind of ran around killing low level enemies in order to get my level up and I it's been pretty grindy. but. It has been fun so far. There's a lot of variety in types of enemies, but I feel like the combat is very simple in a sense because a lot of the enemies are animals, so they just run up to you and hit you. Again, that is something that could be developed upon in the future. 
I also, I kind of like the idea that you cannot see the health bar of the enemy before you start attacking them because it forces you to learn the various types of enemies and also not to just go head first into every battle but you actually have to think about whether or not you want to battle something which I think is pretty nice. I do feel the combat isn't fully there yet, at least not for me because in the beginning when you want to progress I tend to end up just standing on top of a tree and kind of exploit the fact that they can't reach me and just shoot them with a fire staff because I have no way of killing a, a troll in order to get a better weapon and killing a thousand foxes in order to gain enough skill points to maybe fight that troll which I wouldn't even have because I wouldn't have the necessary gear to do it is kind of tedious to me. There is rolling mechanics and block mechanics but I haven't fully found out how to best utilize it yet so it might just be me that's bad but I feel like there could be a lot more added to the combat to make it a bit better but I think that it will also come if, if they choose to make more humanoid enemies for you to fight and also make a more fleshed out skill tree but the, again the game is in early development and it lacks a lot of things right now so for a game in the current state which is also open source and free i think it's pretty good another gripe i do have though with the game is with the merchants because you just get one single page in the shop so you can't sort anything when you try to buy it which is kind of annoying because Looking at 50 different items in a bag and you're trying to find the right item and see if it's anything you need can be very confusing because you don't have the option to go into different categories. So you kind of just have to hover over every single item and hope that you find something that's useful. So naturally as the world is your oyster, the game is very grindy but, but seeing as it still isn't close to fully developed, I think that's pretty fair. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to belittle the work of the developers, it's clear that the game isn't finished yet. But it doesn't mean that it's not a fun experience, right? I know it's free and I know it's constantly being improved, so I'm just here to be a part of that journey. Game offers different biomes, caves, towns and dungeons and there are really a ton of hours ahead of you if you wish to partake in the journey. I've personally been playing solo because, as you know, friends are a social construct and I do not partake in society. Such is the law of the gamer. I think the game is most fun when played in group, at least currently. While I haven't played in a group, I imagine that group play would make it a bit more fair in terms of combat when you can group up on an enemy and just make it easier for you overall to progress a little bit faster. While the game can't be considered a modern successor to Cubal yet, I think it's a very exciting project and I think it's sure, surely worth to follow and play while getting that Cubal fix. I think the future of this project is going to be interesting I'm going to be looking forward to see how they'll implement future updates and also if there ever will be any type of monetization for the game if the developers ever want to be compensated for the game. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, uh, subscribe if you want to or leave a comment about your thoughts about the game or your thoughts about the video. Anything. I'd love to hear from you. Bye bye.